go ahead and make that song your prayer. Have a moment of prayer to tell him you know and you're very sure he's all that you, he's all that your family, he's all that at your workplace in that office, he's all that in that business where you operate from, he's all that in that community where you are. In fact, it should be the best prayer to make right now. Since he has been faithful to cross you over to 2023, he has been that very thing. He has been your defense. He has been your protector. He has been your comforter. He has been your defender. He has been all that you. Thank him for having been that to you. Thank him for having been that to your family. Thank him for having been that to your friends. Thank him for having been that to all those you fellowship with. Yes, go ahead and make some declaration before him. Yes, go ahead and thank him for all that he has done. Don't just take it for granted, but say thank you to him. Don't just take it for granted that you're in 2023. It's because of his grace, it's because of his mercy, it's because of his love that he has enabled you to cross over. May you give him thanks. May you give him thanks. May you give him thanks. Yes, may you give him thanks because he has enabled you to be here even this very afternoon. May you give him thanks because he has enabled you to be watching just right now. There are those who cannot do it right now. There are those who are already bedridden and they can't even say anything. They can't even understand anything on this world or in this world. So give him praises, give him thanks. Give him praises, give him thanks. Lift him higher and higher. Lift him higher and higher. Lift him higher and higher. Yes, exalt his name. Exalt his name. Exalt his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. The mighty one of Israel is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified right now. He's worthy to be lifted up as your banner. Yes, ask of him this afternoon that may lift you higher and higher, that may take you deeper and deeper, that may take you to another higher level in the spiritual realm. Yes, in the things of the spirit, ask of him, ask of him, ask of him. He's just here listening. He's Lord of the universe. He's the king of the universe. He's the mighty deliverer. He's the mighty healer. He's the mighty defender. He's all in all that we could ever imagine and think of. Yes, may you speak to your God. This afternoon, may you speak to your God. May you minister before him. May you minister before him. May you minister before him. May you speak to him who is listening. And Lord, we bless your name. The mighty one of Israel, we thank you. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you all the honor. We are here before you, the ancient of days. It's all about you, it's all about you, the king of the universe. It's all about you, the mighty one of Israel. It's all about you, the glorious master. It's all about you, the glorious king of kings. It's all about you, the glorious Lord. Master, we bless your name for this month of prayer. We bless your name for this month of prayer. We praise your name for this month of prayer. We ask of you, the Lord of hosts, that you reign on high. We ask you, the Lord of hosts, that you reign on high. We ask you, the King of kings, that you reign on high. As your children seek your face, King of glory, may they experience your power. May they experience your praises. May they experience your glory. As men and women, Father God, search for your mysteries, King of glory. May they find them, Lord Almighty. As men and women, Father God, go deeper in prayer. King of the universe, may they have answered prayers. As many, Father God, seek your face, King of glory. May they find you, Lord Almighty. As many knock at your heavenly door, King of glory. May you open up for them, Lord of power. As many, Father God, turn their faces to you, the ancient of days. Master, may you turn their face to them, Father God. May you turn your face to them, King of glory. As many, Father God, seek you to be uplifted, Father God. May you uplift them, Lord Almighty. As many seek you, Father God, to open up divine doors for them, King of glory. Master, may you open up all those doors that had been closed before them, Father God. Lord, have you in. 
and Father, King of glory, in this month of prayer, may you help your children understand the power in this prayer. Yes, the power behind prayer, the power behind prayer. May you help many, Father, King of glory, to overcome the different situations they are facing, Father, King of glory. Lord, have you in. And as the devil, Father God, tries to tempt them, King of glory, may you help them that through prayer, Father God, they will overcome those temptations, King of glory. They will overcome those trials, King of glory. Lord of the universe, have you in. Father, we pray, King of glory, that you open our ears, the spiritual ears. Open our minds, the spiritual minds, King of glory. Open our hearts, the spiritual hearts, Father God. May we be taken deeper, deeper, deeper in the things of the Spirit, Father, King of glory. In the mysteries of the Spirit, Father, King of glory. Lord, reign on high. And even this afternoon, Father, we ask of you that you take us deeper, much deeper, much deeper. May you hope the men and women who are here and those who are listening, King of glory, to know that they don't need only to come to you, Father God, when they have issues of life, King of glory. But they will make this a, a lifestyle, King of glory, to be in your presence 24-7, King of glory, that they will surrender to you, the mighty one of Israel, that they will allow you to realign their wills to your will, King of glory. Lord of the universe, have your way. And Master, King of glory, speak to each one of us this afternoon. Minister to each one of us this afternoon. And when you are done, may you take the praise, the glory, and honor. We thank you, ancient of days. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you all the honor. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. That was for your LOC, guys. Give a hand clap to the mighty one of Israel. Amen and amen. When you are clapping to the mighty one of Israel, you need to know that any time he can take you, or any time he can chop off those hands, so you clap as if there is no tomorrow. Because he has given you that opportunity at that particular minute. Praise God. We are talking about the power of prayer in overcoming temptation. In that very text, Luke 21, verse 34 to 36. May you open your Bibles with me. Luke 21, verse 34 to 36. Are we there? The Bible says, Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with collapsing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man, the Word of the Lord. When you check that entire chapter, the Lord Jesus Christ was warning the children of Israel and his disciples to keep watch the entire chapter. But it's not only that chapter where Christ tells these disciples to watch, or where Jesus Christ tells those people who are around him to watch, when you check almost the entire book of Luke, he keeps reminding them to watch, to watch, to watch every now and then. And in this very chapter, when you look at the beginning verses, we see the disciples remarking about the magnificent building, the wonderful temple that had been adorned with every beautiful stone that they could ever think of. And then, having been dedicated to this mighty one of Israel, they looked at something, at it as something very awesome that everybody needed to talk about. But then as the disciples were walking down the road and talking about this magnificent temple, Jesus Christ turns their channel. He turns their channel by shocking them that they didn't need to talk about this magnificent temple at all. Because every stone, every wonderful stone that they had been using to put it up was going to be put down completely. And so it tells them that not even one stone was going to be left standing, but they were going to be thrown down. He goes on to tell them about the signs 
the signs that they needed to take keen ear, take keen eye, take keen look at before he is coming down again, before the end of the ages. In other words, Christ wanted them to look at the things that were yet to come, the spiritual things that were yet to come, not about the buildings that had been put across, not about the treasures of the world that had been put across, not about those things that they had looked at and they had put their trust into, not at all. This afternoon we are here also to be challenged in the same way, children of God. The apostles or the disciples looked at the temple as something that was so precious, as something that was so important, as something that was supposed to be treasured by then. But then Jesus looked at it and it wasn't an issue. There were other things that they needed to turn their eyes onto, to turn their souls onto, to turn their minds onto, to turn their lives onto. There were things that they needed to look at and consider that we are winning them to the spiritual realm, not to the earthly realms. That we are preparing them for his return, not for these daily things that they needed to share around. Child of God this afternoon, we are just being encouraged through that, that we need to keep watch, we need to keep in prayer, we need to know that there is power in prayer. There is power that you are dressed up with each moment you go into your prayer closet. Each moment you spare time and go before him. Each moment you go into his presence. You can't be left the same way. I don't know whether it's like that to you, child of God. That each time you go into your prayer closet, there's something external that happens. There's something that you are dressed up with. I don't know. I don't know whether... Each second, each minute you spend in prayer causes a change inside of you, causes a change around you, causes a change in your family. I don't know really. And I don't know whether you are among these ones who just go and beep, just make a beep and run out. Praise God. This afternoon we want to be encouraged, children of God, that there is power, divine power, extraordinary power, each moment you go before him in prayer. And that power is the only power that can help you overcome the situations around you. I don't know what you were facing last year, whether it's still standing giving this year. I don't know whether there are issues of life that you were battling with last year and you allowed them to come even in this year or to follow you this year. I don't know. It's all about you. But look rise here to just help us go deeper in the words of Jesus Christ when he spoke about keeping watching, keeping in prayer. When the Bible says keep watch, it's not only telling you that anyway, keep your eyes open and look. No, it's just encouraging you to go spiritually deeper in prayer. Praise God. I don't know how many of us have been just looking at situations happening. I don't know how many of us have been just watching issues go on. But the moment you see anything happening, it calls you to go on your knees. It calls you to go into your prayer closet. It calls you to spare time for the Lord and before the Lord so that you can go an extra mile to fight the spiritual battles that you may be facing. The Bible tells us in this very text that we are reading, that's Luke 21, verse 34 onwards, the Bible says, be careful. Other versions say, take heed. Others even say, take heed and keep God. Praise God. The Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples that they needed to keep watch 24-7. Otherwise, their hearts would be taken, would be weighed down, yet they didn't need their hearts to be weighed down. And then he gives examples of those things that were going to weigh them down and says those issues of life, the drunkenness, the anxieties of life, all the cares of this world. And those were just a few, but there were a lot of things that had kept on weighing the disciples down. That instead of looking at things of the kingdom, 
they had, started, they had started looking at the things of the world. Instead of valuing the things of the kingdom, they had started valuing the things of the world. Instead of keeping their hearts, their minds on him, the Lord of the universe, they were now looking at the other issues of this world. And so, that's why he reminded them to keep watch. When you check this gospel of Luke, in fact, in Luke 8.18, Jesus reminded them that they needed to take heed on how they listened to the word of the Lord. Because there were so many issues of life that could steal the word of the Lord from them. Do you remember when he told them that parable of the sower? And he talks about how the sower went out to sow the seeds. And then he says some of the seeds fell on the way. Others fell on the rock. Others fell on in an area with thorns. And then when the thorns came up, they choked the seeds and then they couldn't do well. Do you remember that even he talked about the cares of the world in that very parable? So in Luke 8, 18, he reminded them because he saw them, they were not attentive to the words he was talking to them. And then told them, guys, Take a heed of the way how you listen to the words I'm telling you. Praise God. I don't know how many times, I don't know how often you take it a serious issue to listen to the word of God seriously. I don't know whether you take heed the way you listen to the word of God, the way you take it inside. That also is very key. Because if you don't do so, then you can easily be taken away or swayed away by the temptations of the devil. Praise God. It is very easy for you to be swayed away by all sorts of doctrines around you. And you fail to listen to the exact doctrine you are supposed to listen to. Praise God, children of God. In Luke 11:35. Jesus again told them to take heed that their light, the light that was inside them, could not become darkness. That wasn't only to look around. No. It was to take an extra mile to keep in prayer, to keep watching, prayer free, prayer free watching, so that they could not allow the devil to darken whatever was inside. I don't know how much darkness has come inside of you, child of God. I don't know how much darkness was inside you last year. And then you have crossed over with the same darkness inside of you. But Christ reminded his disciples and those that were around him that they needed to take heed that the little light that he had given inside them, that he had put inside them, could not turn up into darkness. How much light is shining inside of you, child of God? And how much darkness have you allowed to come inside of you to take away even the little light that has been existing? Can you check yourself a little bit right now? I don't mean even yesterday. Can you check yourself a little bit? Just a few days you have crossed over to 2023 and check the things that have caused already darkness inside your mind, inside your heart, inside your soul, inside your life. Yet there was some little light that Jesus Christ had shed inside of you. Praise God. That one also calls for prayer. And it's only the power in prayer that can help you to overcome every form of darkness that come, can come your way. In Luke 12, 15, again Jesus tells them to take heed and be aware of greed. Because greed had become an issue. Praise God. This was to the disciples by then. But then what about you? What about you, child of God? Who thinks you can overcome every temptation that comes your way? But then there are other areas, there are other issues you don't want even people to talk about. Have you been greedy yourself wherever you are? Or oh, has greed taken you over? Has it swallowed you? Has it swallowed those you are working with? Has it swallowed your family? Has it swallowed? Jesus said, take a heed, be aware, be aware. Keep watch, keep in prayer. In Luke 17, verse 3, 
Again, Jesus Christ tells them to take heed that if your brother trespasses against you, if your brother sins against you, you rebuke him. And if he repents, then forgive him. All this was causing darkness in the children of Israel. Just as it causes darkness even today. If your brother or sister sins against you, the Bible says, rebuke him or her. And if that one who is rebuked repents, then forgive. Christ wanted these guys to walk a repentant life, a forgiving life. Are there those ones you have carried into 2023 when you have not forgiven them? Are they there? Then you need to check yourself. You can't keep in the choir prayer closet and you get breakthroughs and the Lord answers your prayers. When you have a baggage of a list of all a line of those ones, you have not forgiven. It can't happen. There are things that can really broke the power of the Lord to saturate, the power of the Lord to work in your life and around you. As we talk about the power of prayer, you can't experience the power of prayer when you have issues of life of such kind. You won't be broken yourself. So child of God, just as Jesus Christ warned those guys, you need to be warned this afternoon as well. In this very chapter that we are reading, when you check verse 8, he again tells the disciples to take a heed because there were many who were going to come claiming that they were him. And then he tells them, do not be deceived, do not follow them. All this was not just mere looking. It was just taking prayer as a serious issue. Are you here this afternoon and you want to have that power of your prayer, power in prayer to overcome any form of temptation? Then you need to change the channel. You need to go deeper. Deal with all the things that the enemy can use to overcome you. All the things that the enemy can use to broke you in prayer. All those issues of life that the devil can use to become stumbling broke in your life, you need to deal with them. This afternoon, as we talk about the power of prayer in overcoming temptation, we also need to take heed to all these things that the Lord Jesus Christ talked about to his disciples. He did not only warn them to keep watch, to keep in prayer in chapter 21. No, he told them right from the beginning, and they are the very issues of life that we need to look at seriously if we are to overcome. In this very chapter, we see Christ citing out some few issues that could weigh down these guys and then be prayerless, then be powerless in their prayers. When he talks about the dispersion, when he talks about the drunkenness, when he talks about the cares of life, these are the very issues of life that are still happening. Even today in Christ's church, you find men and women drinking, becoming drunk as, they, as much as they can. And others have taken it a, a lifestyle. They are just taking it as a lifestyle. In the afternoon, just as we are now, they can be listening to the gospel. But in the evening, they are in a bars. Others, because of the social life, they have even gone ahead to make things more simplified. The bars are in their houses. They are in their houses. Because they fear that when they go out, they will be seen by other believers. So they have brought the bars closer inside their houses. And then they think they are children of God who are walking in light. They think they are right with their God. They think that's the way their God is supposed to be treated. Don't think that when he was talking about the drunkenness, he meant only those ones who go to the bars. He also meant those believers who had turned their houses into bars. I am among those ones who have turned their houses into bars because you think they won't see you. This afternoon, you, want, you need to repent. This very hour, you need to repent. And if you are here looking at me, you need to run back and throw away every, every, every liquor that you have inside your house. Or if you are just watching me, you need to cut everything and pour it into the dustbin. Praise God. 
It is the drunkenness that was weighing down people. It is the cares of this world, all this life, that were weighing down people. It is the dispersion that was weighing down the believers, the so-called disciples of Jesus Christ. And so he warned them in our advance. This was just a few. What are those issues of life that have weighed you down, child of God? That you are no longer prayerful, but you are prayerless. That you are no longer fiery. You are just there. That even the devil is just joking around with you. He can even come and tap at you and laugh at you. Praise God. As we go through this month, as we go through this year, may we go to another level of prayer so that our prayers will have power inside of them. Because the Lord hasn't given up to empower us through prayer. Every single moment we go to seek his face in prayer, he empowers us. And by the time we come out, we are very powerful that the devil can't touch us, that the devil can't dare to joke with us. The Bible tells us this afternoon that the Lord reminded the children of Israel and the disciples that they needed to take a keen look at this. Unfortunately, today, in today's world, men have become a prey to the snares, to these traps, and even to the so many other traps. I can't go on asking each one of us, but just take just a few minutes, few seconds, and ask yourself inside, what has become my trap? What has the devil used to become a trap that I have also fallen into the same trap? Praise God. When the Lord Jesus Christ was talking again in this very parable of the sower, he reminded the children of Israel about the cares of the world that could easily make them miss the kingdom. He did that. Even when he was talking about this issue in Matthew 25, he still talks about that parable of the virgins, the ten virgins. And then he says the five were very foolish, and the five were wise. The other ones who were wise, they made sure that they kept extra, extra oil to go throughout the whole night. But the foolish ones, they never did that. And the Bible says it's only the wise ones that entered with him. Would you be among the wise ones that you can trim your lamp, your lamp of the heart, that you can trim it this year, that it will be a fiery lantern. It will be a fiery lamp. It will be ready, ready 24-7. And as Jesus talked about all these issues of life, he was simply reminding the children of Israel that they needed to be alert because he was going to return. In fact, in Luke 12, he reminded them again. Even in Matthew 12, he reminded them again of the same watching, 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 watching for his return. As we live today, desiring to have a powerful prayer filled with the power that can overcome situations, that can overcome temptations, we need to live knowing that he is returning. In fact, we need to live as believers knowing that any time he can turn up, even today, live as though he is returning today. Ask that neighbor around you that is this the way you have been living, knowing that he can return any time. Praise God. The issues of the world have blindfolded us that we can't even think of these issues. They have blindfolded us. We are also living like any other in the world. In fact, men have convinced us that he will not return. Men have convinced us that those things are history. Many, many. And in so doing, we have been overcome by temptation. By this very hour, we want to go deeper and deeper to another level. As Christ talks about the snares that could take the children of Israel away, that could take his disciples away, he wanted them to know that on and on in keeping in prayer closet, in keeping in prayer before him and with him and in him, that's the only way they could overcome any temptation that could sweep them away. 
the snares that he was talking about in this very text that we have read, they could only overcome them through prayer and keeping in prayer. And child of God this very afternoon, on and on in prayer, and on and on in the power of prayer, and the power in prayer, that you will be able to overcome all those snares that the devil has brought your way in this world. On in prayer, one can overcome one can overcome the laziness that the devil has created in us, that the devil has brought in us about his return. Only in a prayer that you, child of God, you can keep watch, you can keep alert, and wait upon him, upon his coming, although he's coming just tomorrow. Otherwise, this laziness that the devil has brought our way, it will sweep us continuously. It will sweep you also, child of God. That having swept you, then you will add on other issues of life to really weigh you down to the end of the ages. The Bible tells us in Luke 12, 35 to 40, that there was this servant, this servant that the child of God needed to keep watch. The master needed to keep watch so that at his return, he was steady. He was steady, dressed up, ready for his service. And then he says, how awesome will it be when the master finds you watching and then you serve him and then you are taken to serve him alone. Children of God, it's only prayer that can help us overcome the temptations of being too lazy not being ready 24-7 for his service, not being ready 24-7 for his coming back, not even being ready for easy heavenly business. Are there issues of life that have taken you away that you are no longer ready for him? Are there issues of life that have really weighed you down that sometime back you used to be ready you used to serve him. You used to avail yourself for his service. But as per now, you are no longer anywhere. This afternoon, we need to check ourselves. And check ourselves carefully. So that whatever has weighed us down, whatever has made us unready, whatever has dressed us off the garments of salvation, the garments of holiness, the garments of righteousness, then we should deal with that as well. The Bible tells us that Christ, in telling the disciples these things, he wanted them to be ready for the final tribulation that was coming their way. In his coming, he was warning them that they needed to be ready. They needed to keep watch so that they would not be part they would not be part of those who are going to face the great tribulation in his coming. So that they would not be among those ones who would say, mountains, fall on us. We can't bear what is coming ahead. Are you among those ones who are working tirelessly that you won't be among those ones who fail the great tribulation at his return? that will not suffer the way those ones who rejected him will suffer at his return. Don't wait at that very moment when he comes back. No, you need to begin now so that you keep watch 24-7 so that when he comes back, it will not take you by surprise. Praise God. Children of God, only the power of prayer will help us overcome all the issues of life. As it talks of taking heed, the way we listen to the word, only prayer will keep us alert. As it talks about taking heed, as far as the darkness of the world is concerned, only prayer will keep our candles burning inside of us and around us. As it talks about taking heed as others sin against us and we are supposed to release them every now and then, only prayer 
will convict you, will keep you alert spiritually to be convicted, to give, forgive the other, to release the other. And as he talks about those who have been trying to claim that they are him, only prayer will keep us in that spiritual level that will be discerning, that will discern whatever is known to right as a child of God, and then you will keep right before him and with him. May we stand up on our two feet. I don't know what has overcome you as a child of God. It's you who knows what has overcome you already. You may find it overcame you last year. But even as you entered this new year, it has followed you and has still overcome you. Would you go deeper in prayer and ask of the Lord this afternoon that he makes you an overcomer? I don't know how your prayer life is as per now, but would you take a step of faith and ask him to refine you, to refine you, to rekindle you in prayer, to rekindle you, to empower you afresh. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. It's you who knows which areas of your life that you want the Lord to work on, that you want the Lord to, re, to refurbish, that you want the Lord to rekindle, that you want the Lord to refine. It's you who knows. Go ahead and ask of him. And maybe just as he was taking the disciples to take heed in those different areas, you may find that you also need to take heed in those same areas. Ask of him. Ask of this mighty one of Israel that he will help you, that you will take a heed in the way you listen to his word, that you will take a heed that that light that he has put inside of you will not become darkness, that you will take a heed that you will be very aware, very alert, yes, that you will not be swayed away by greed, by covetousness, yes. Yes, tell him, tell him that he will help you to take a heed that when your brother or sister sins against you, you will release that one immediately. You will even rebuke in love, in love, in love, the heavenly love. And then when the brother or sister repents, then you'll be able to forgive. Ask of him this afternoon that he will help you, that he will take a heed, that not any person will come your way claiming to be he, and then you'll be swayed away. Ask of him this afternoon that will help you to take a heed that all those issues of life that might weigh you down will not be your portion again. Ask of him that he helps you to take a heed of the habit that you have been going through that has weighed you down continuously, that you will not be part and partial of the same habit. Ask him this afternoon that the cares of this world, the cares of this life, yes, the anxieties of this life will not sway you around Ask of him. Ask of him. I don't know which cares of life that has have already weighed you down, that have already pushed you down, that have already worn you. But the Lord is faithful this afternoon. He is willing to forgive you. He is willing to refine you. He is willing to refresh you. He is willing to put you right again. That's what he is willing to do. Talk to your God. Talk to your God. Talk to your God. And maybe there are issues of life that have also made you to behave like the way others are behaving. Yes, may you ask of him to uplift you right now, to uplift you right now, and take you to another level that you'll be an overcomer, that you'll be an overcomer, that you'll be an overcomer. In fact, ask the Lord of the universe to help you that from now onwards, you overcome every kind of temptation that the devil will bring your way that you'll be able to overcome the temptations of the world, the temptations of the flesh, the temptations of the devil himself, that you'll be able to overcome. Ask of him, ask of the might one of Israel to help you overcome every now and then, to help you overcome every now and then, to help you overcome every now and then. Ask the Lord of the universe to help you this year that you have priority and the things that you put in your priorities, there will be those first, of the kingdom business, of the eternity, of the kingdom business. Ask of him, ask of the Lord of the universe to help you that when he comes back, he'll find you alert. He'll find you alert. He'll find you alert. 
Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all the honor. We come before you this very hour. We ask of you to have your way. We know, Father, King of glory, that we can really be powerless, Father God. We can really be powerless, Father God, unless otherwise you come in to intervene. Father, we ask of you that you hope us, King of glory, that every single prayer we shall make down here, yes, you empower us, Father God. You ignite us, Father God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, King of glory, and we shall be able to overcome every form of temptation. Master, this afternoon, we ask of you that you help us as individuals be overcomers. Help us as husbands to be overcomers. Help us as wives to be overcomers. Help us as children to be overcomers. Help us, Father God, as your children, heavenly children, heavenly sons and daughters of yours, to be overcome as King of glory, just as you overcame the devil, as he came to tempt you. Yes, during that time, when you are in the desert, King of glory, may you help us that every kind of desert we face, Father God, we shall be able to overcome, Father God. Every challenge of life that we face, Father God, we shall be able to overcome. Master, help us to, over, to be overcomers in the businesses where we operate from. Help us to be overcomers, Father God, in the offices where we operate from. Help us to be overcomers, Father God, in the ministries where we operate from. Help us to be overcomers, Father God, in the families where we are, in the clans where we are, in the villages where we are, in the town areas where we are. Help us to be overcomers, King of glory, in the different situations, Father God, that we face every now and then. Child of God, May you go ahead and ask the Lord to make you an overcomer, to help you overcome every challenge that might come your way. 2023, every situation that the devil may, might bring your way. 2023 onwards, that every situation, every challenge that the devil may plan your way. Yes, pray that you be an overcomer. Ask the Lord of the universe to take you to another spiritual level that you even you'll be able to discern, to discern, to discern. In the case there are traps that the devil has brought your way, you will be able to discern. In the case there are things that the devil has brought your way, you will be able to discern. In the case there are strongholds that the devil has laid your way, you will be able to discern. That's what the Lord is able to do. When you go to the prayer closet, the Lord empowers you every now and then. When you go to the prayer closet, the Lord gives you the spirit of discernment. When you go to the prayer closet, the Lord gives you wisdom. When you go to the prayer closet, the Lord empowers you to overcome. When you go into the prayer closet, the Lord takes you to another level. Yes, ask of him. Father, we ask of you, King of glory, that you help us. That every moment we are going to come before you, King of glory, it will take us to another level. It will make us different, Father God. It will make us discerned vessels, Father God. It will make us powerful vessels, Father God. It will make us, King of glory, extraordinary vessels, Father God. Vessels that will, Father God, yes, fight the enemy. Vessels, King of glory, that will rebuke the enemy. Vessels, King of glory, that will be fired. That will be fired. That will be fired. That will be fired. Yes, Lord Almighty. That vessels that will be flames of fire wherever we are, wherever we go, wherever we turn. Master, King of glory, help us, Lord Almighty, that we shall overcome, Father God, every area, every area, every situation, everything that an enemy will come our way. May our family members, Father God, be prayerful people, King of glory. May our wives be prayerful wives, Father God. May our husbands be prayerful husbands, Father God. May our children be prayerful children, Father God. May our relatives, Father God. May our friends, may all our families, Father God, be prayerful people, King of glory, that they will overcome every temptation that will come our way, that will come their way. Master, I pray, King of glory, that as we walk this year, King of glory, as we walk this month of prayer, Master, may you transform us. May you transform us. May you transform us. May you empower us. May you empower us. May you empower us, King of glory. May you make us life warriors. Holy Ghost for our life warriors. Holy Ghost for our life warriors. Holy Ghost for our life warriors, Father God, that will shock the devil, that will shock the devil, that will shock his agents, that will shock all those that will bring our way. Lord, reign on high. And Father, I pray, King of glory, that you take us to another spiritual level of overcoming the devil's schemes, the devil's traps, the devil's ways, the devil's traps, Father God, the devil's, Father God, to inspire his King of glory. Lord, reign on high. And man, I pray, King of glory, 
that to all those that have been weighed down by the issues of life, may you hope them this afternoon, Father God, that they will overcome all those issues, King of Glory. I pray, Father, King of Glory, that to all those who have come here, if there are issues of life that had weighed them down, that have been continuing on in their lives, Father God, as they leave this place, King of Glory, may you give them the power to overcome them, to deal with them right now. And to all those who have been watching King of Glory, wherever they are, may you also give them, Father God, the ability to overcome all issues of life that have weighed them down, that they will be overcome as to the end of the ages. Master, thank you. Master, thank you. Master, thank you. May you reveal us by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you fill us with a beam by the power of the Holy Spirit, Father God, that we shall operate by the power of the Holy Spirit. We shall walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. We shall plan by the power of the Holy Spirit. We shall overcome all temptations by the power of the Holy Spirit. The way you hope your child, Jesus Christ, to overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit during that time in the desert. Master, fill us to the brim. Fill us to the brim. Fill us to the brim. That the Holy Ghost will help us to overcome every temptation, every issue, everything that the enemy will bring our way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray.